Lots of engineers and scientists are trying to fix deep problems, but some of them are fixing problems in the deep. To find out more, today we're meeting Lisa Bratton, an underwater dive engineer. Engineers design and maintain the infrastructure that keeps human civilization going. And nowhere is that more evident than at the edge of that civilization. The structures here have to endure surging tides, strong storms, and even the corrosive power of seawater. But who can make sure that that infrastructure stays safe? It's not like dolphins are going to help. They've got dolphin problems to think about. Nope, you need a human expert. And that's why today we're following Lisa Bratton, a dive engineer with a unique set of skills. So I've always loved the water. I was a swimmer since I was like four years old. Turned pro, swam professionally for about three years after college. I also tried out for the Olympics in 2012, 2016, and 2021. But I've also known I've always wanted to be an engineer. And so finding ocean engineering kind of let me marry my two passions. Lisa and her team are inspecting a pedestrian bridge and a section of bulkhead here in Sheep's Head Bay, New York. So she's sharing some of the tools and talents she brings to an underwater inspection. When we first roll up to a dive site, we're gonna open up the trailer, we're gonna pull out our umbilical cords, we're gonna get the hats out, we're gonna get the compressor started so we can get the air flowing. The umbilical is the air hose that sends air to the divers, so that way we can get comms and air to the diver, and then the tender is the one managing that umbilical while the diver's in the water. Then I will move to the hats where I do air and communications checks. Raj, loud and clear. Come yep, got you loud and clear. Raj. With the gear ready, Lisa and her co-diver put on their safety equipment and dive helmets. They enter the bay, and Lisa establishes the baseline condition of the bulkhead wall and the wooden piles on the bridge, both visually and with her hands. Next, she'll use tools like the hammer to clean off material and the ruler to measure the size of defects or components. We are looking for those early signs of stress, those early signs of deterioration. Anything that's telling us something is going wrong with the structure that we can repair before it becomes a public safety issue. My next steps are to move to those more level two measurements, such as the diameter of the piles or the ultrasonic thickness measurement, which sends ultrasonic waves into the steel to measure the thickness of the steel remaining. Another step I do during my inspection is use the bathychrometer to determine the rate of deterioration of steel. Lisa's checking to see if the steel in the structure is in danger of what's called galvanic corrosion, where metal loses electrons to electrolytes in the salty ocean water and then degrades. If two different metals are touching, like aluminum and steel, they will form a circuit, and the more reactive metal will corrode faster than the other. This can be a dangerous problem. Like when the Statue of Liberty needed years of repairs after galvanic corrosion weakened connections between the copper skin and wrought iron armature. But this principle can also help save structures. Attaching bits of highly reactive metals to the more important metals, like steel, creates what's called sacrificial anodes. These anodes corrode faster, while the load-bearing metals corrode slower. The anodes are often made with the metal zinc and are sometimes simply called zincs. These are used to protect not just piers and bridges, but also ships and boats. The bathychrometer lets Lisa know if the sacrificial anodes are doing their job and keeping the electric potential in the steel at a safe level. A lot of times I will take photos underwater of any significant defects we find, so any large spalls, uh, significant corrosion, so that way we can show the picture to the client and they can understand what we're writing about in the report. Once Lisa's done with the dive and out of the water, she meets with the team to discuss the findings of the inspection. These findings will be incorporated into a report for the client, or we'll use them to design repairs for the structure. Engineer diving is historically a male-dominated field. Um, however, as a female walking into this career, I feel accepted. I feel as one of the team, like there's no extra challenges just being a female. It's definitely a fun, rewarding career. And I'm grateful that we can all just work together to inspect uh, waterfront structures. A lot of them are public open spaces and we need to keep our infrastructure safe for our public to continue to use them in the future. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really, I've seen this one over a hundred times.